sorry, it's me. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a, uh, this is a bit of a, a recent effort, but actually also as a, as a reaction from um, somebody telling me, your build is awful, um, we need to do something about it. Uh, actually, Kareem wrote me uh, a book of an email about um, how hard it is to use build as age and how, how, how error prone it can be to get started with creating kernel modules um, if you're just like starting with it. Um, so it was always overdue to, to do something about that and, and how to uh, and, and to rethink how we how we do builds for the Android kernel. But that was just a trigger and um, there were reasonable and, and, and rightful complaints all over the board and um, some of these things are addressed here. Um, so what do we do actually? So if, you, if you're used to building an Android common kernel, your command line looked like using a, uh, first of all, exporting an uh, environment variable and then calling a, a shell script. And um, in a nutshell, what we changed, we use a, a proper build system, or like a, a sophisticated build system that is not a shell script, um, and a proper build definition that can be uh, tested and that, that has proper dependencies, proper parallelism, and especially some, some other features that I'll get to. Um, all this development is, is open source. Um, while we are defining all these interfaces, none of them, um, none of that is happening behind closed doors. Um, maybe some, some brainstorming, but in general, every, every code that we do, every iteration is, is public. So you can, um, like, we also try to document uh, everything along the way. Um, so you can follow along and, um, yeah. So building a kernel is uh, basically Bazel build and that uh, definition, whoever is familiar with Bazel might recognize that common is a package and kernel arc 64 is a, is a target here. Um, and it follows a bit of the, uh, the directory structure. So where did we come from? Yeah, we came from like <laughs> when I joined that team, I got told uh, here's a document and that's how you build the kernel. And uh, hopefully everything is in there is up to date. And if it's not, then please update it. and. Um, Whoever joins next is um, passed on that hot potato. Um, so, and I thought that, that that's really not working. If you're doing things like GKI, we need uh, stable ABIs. We need to, uh, like, stable APIs. We need consistent build tools across the ecosystem. We don't want to deal with environment variable bugs or anything like that. So, Build as Age um, was um, yeah, published and used uh, a lot. Uh, and now we do the next iteration uh, with Bazel, um, and the implementation that we do is, is called Cleave. Um, it's a bit of a, a word play with what the Android platform does with, with Bazel. If you want to know the details, come to me afterwards. Um, so what did do what BuildSH did do for us is it has some way of uh, configuration uh, of configuring the build. It's not only about kernel config, but also toolchain configuration and um, uh, make targets. Um, it also does package things. It, it, it packages images. Uh, it can do uh, module builds, external module builds. It does mixed builds, as we heard just right before. And it has a lot of control switches um, for uh, like that that are done with environment variables. And it just like it was an ever-growing shell script collection, and it, it became difficult to maintain, especially um, if you have like combinations of this is a mixed build and you want to do ABI updates at the same time and symbolist updates and you need untrimmed kernels and trimmed kernels and, and all these things are not really like, you always have to, oh, which flag is set now? In which mode are we now? There's no consistent target definition and, and what are we currently doing? And as a shell script, it also has a limited um, parallelism as well. Hermeticity, we just like hacked in and what you see on the right side, so, oh, okay, why is it? You see the pictures at the side, there's a bit of a screenshot. These are just like four screenshots of only bit as age documentation at the beginning of the script, like documenting all the different uh, flags and features it has. Now we switched to Bazel because the Android platform did it and, and that, that's a reasonable choice to also eventually integrate the, the kernel build by source in the Android platform build. Um, but there's more to it. Um, Bazel is, is, is scalable, it's known to be scalable. Um, it has proper sandboxing built in. So whatever you declare is visible to the build. Whatever you don't declare is not visible to the build. So you know exactly your dependencies when it comes to toolchain, 
uh, other dependencies like headers has quite uh, fast incremental builds it does a properly proper build analysis um, across uh, like for example if you think of um, modules depending on each other um, it has a better implementation implementation of parallelism which mostly most build tools have these days and integrates nicely with things like remote builds and, and remote caching and um, how we do how we do curl builds um, is we just get environment setups that are consistent. So no matter where you run, no matter when you run, uh, if you put the same sources in, you get the same setup. Um, we enforce the hermetic tool chain. There's no way around to get the right compiler for the for the kernel. You don't. There's no way around getting the right linkers and everything in place. So if you run it on on your uh, on your private laptop or on another core machine, you will get the same setup. Um, and it all comes included. Um, we still wrap make dev config. We still wrap cabled as an authoritative uh, build system. Um, we have plans to tweak that a bit to, to make it a bit more basally, but and under the hood, cabled will be the authoritative build system. So it will be still driven by cabled. We do not write new basal files for core make, make files. The, the core make files stay where they are. Um, so how does it look like? How do I define a build? The left side, you can see um, the, the actual kernel build definition um, comes uh, with, the, with the default set of things like the tool chain. You don't even specify it here. You just say, here's my build config. Build config is still a thing from the build as age world that we retire. But um, as, a, as a way of migrating, we are using all these things. And um, uh, over time, build configs will go away. And these will be flags here in, in, uh, in, in, in these build definitions. And similarly, as you can see, there's a kernel module definition that just specifies a common kernel, the one above, uh, as a dependency. And there's no other specif specification of a, of a build config. There's no specification of um, a tool chain. It just makes sure it inherits everything from the common kernel above. So we enforce that the module is built correctly with the right tool chain, no matter what the kernel build actually offers. Um, and we make sure it's ABI and API compatible. And so if you build these things together, um, you will get a proper uh, distribution. Um, if you go in the subdirectory um, where this module lives, you can simply do basal build NFC, the target name, and it will do everything that is needed, like possibly acquire any tool chain if it's not there for some reason, or um, it will make sure that uh, the kernel is built if you need a kernel build for that. Um, it still requires uh, cabled make files, um, like cabled and make file that you usually specify for modules, and we are fully compatible with that. Um, but it limits the visibility of what you can see. For example, you only see um, uh, kernel headers. You don't see source files. You see kernel tree, but it has only headers when you compile. Um, now, the next step that we are currently working on, um, that is um, currently in review, is um, a so-called driver development kit, a DDK. Um, where you can specify, um, let's say, a DDK module. You put your sources in, you refer again to the common kernel, and um, it simply, you, you define it, uh, you define drivers or modules in a way that you would, for example, in Suong, define a, a C++ library or a C library, or in Bazel, a C library by just saying, these are my sources, and these are the only ones that I'm seeing. These are headers. So if any module would depend on me, they would see these headers that I export. Uh, and here's the kernel build I'm depending on. And you see that, again, our NFC module, it comes with its own sources. It has uh, nfc.h. And in case it would depend on uh, a header file from, from this base module, it would just simply define it as a dependency. That would cause it to be uh, build obviously afterwards, it would cause that um, uh, the, the, the header file base age is, is visible and can be included, and only that. And um, lastly, it will make sure, again, the right tool chain is used. And um, uh, in the, the neat part here is uh, all the make files, the k build files, and in and, and future also the k-config files, as much as we can, should be automatically generated under the hood. That allows us to make uh, use of new features that come with uh, uh, with cabled, even though we don't need to touch the actual interface from DDK. If you were to upstream a driver that is built like that, because you 
you're like eventually done and want to upstream it, uh, you can literally just take that make for that is generated and, and use it to upstream. There's a question. Yes, so I see you have kernel build mentioned twice, and obviously when things are mentioned twice, the potential thing. And this is only a sketch, but. So this is a sketch. Yes, kernel build is a mandatory parameter currently. Um, we, we thought of um, le like deducting um, the kernel build from the other module. Um, what we currently do is we enforce that they are consistent so that you're using the same one. If you would use another one, but just like say, no, that's not how you do it. Um, this answer, like this, this is one way forward. It's still, it's still a bit in, in, in review. We still try to figure out what is the convenient way. And obviously there will be more features that we add to it. Um, but it's a simple way to, to get started. Now there's more to it. We can like, uh, one of the big complaints was like, there are so many environment variables. What if they set them? Like how, how I, how should I all remember that? And a Unix tool should have dash dash something, something. So. The, the build in this case has like, for example, basil build dash dash LTO equals something. And this will apply to the entire build uh, uh, for, the, for the kernel and the modules. Um, it has, uh, we have some, some configurations that you can consistently use like a config fast, which is might, it might be a good uh, thing for locally, uh, which implies uh, thin and, and local compilation where we use a bit of a, we break a bit out of the sandbox to, to use some more caching mechanisms. Um, you can consistently enable k um, and it's um, completely um, propagated across the tree. And if you would omit that flag next time, it's also made sure that all the rules are invalidated and you rebuild exactly the cases that you, uh, exactly the thing that you need. Um, under the hood, we create a lot of like little, little snippets that we execute. Um, but there are always like, like, for example, debug print scripts will print these, these scripts for you and uh, show them. Um, question coming in. Okay. Um, we effectively, um, since since Cleave is now uh, the, the default system for Android 14 builds and Android mainline, we are effectively deprecating build this age. Uh, but we also have automatic command line tools, uh, a, a, a automatic command line migrations. So, for example, if you call build this age on a branch where it's deprecated, uh, it will actually go in use the build system to query the exact target that you would um, uh, execute instead and will tell you exactly the command line that you have to run in, in the new world um, to, um, to use the Caliph instead. Uh, similarly, we are working on uh, build config migration. So if you, if you have downstream uh, build config files yourself, um, we basically have a tool that says run that tool and here's your new version of, uh, of the Bazel file that you have to use instead. So we try to make migration also very easy. Um, yeah, one, que one, one question that regularly comes up, isn't that making uh, out of three modules easier to, to maintain and do we not discourage upstreaming with that? I think one answer that, that I regularly give is I, I want, I want uh, module development to be quite easy and approachable and the result should, uh, should be easy to also port between major versions, it should be easy to port uh, a kernel module from, let's say, Android 13.5.15 to 14.5.15 with minimal changes so that people that actually want to port forward towards Android mainline, towards mainline, have little, little work to do or like a decreased amount of work. And um, by specifying exactly the dependency, what am I depending on? By forcing people to be honest about what their dependencies are, it also helps to um, unwind that, that, that tree of dependencies to eventually upstream one by one. Questions? Um, one, two? One? Okay. So, yeah, so for having complained about build SH, um, I just want to say that I love the solution for now. So I've not, I've not tried your solution just yet, but this is much better than build SH that I complained about a while ago. So I'm thank you for this. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> Other questions? Oh, yes, sure. Uh, quick question: uh, Does it does the Basel uh, handle incremental builds better than build sh, which was not handling them at all? The incremental builds with Basel are they better? So, like determining um, what needs to be rebuilt, 
um, is significantly faster. So usually, um, like every input is um, every input is tracked. So you you don't have to like like make usually attempts to just rebuild and and, and early exits at, at certain stages. Uh, while the the Basel rules can eliminate quite quite quickly and invalidate quite quickly. Um, so for example, if you just build a module. It will just like if you just change the sources for a module, even though you depend on an entire kernel build, that entire kernel build will be skipped right away because there's none none, none of the inputs has changed, none of the uh, in, like, input leaves or the into input rules has changed, so you get right away to that kernel build. So if if you think of this DDK step here, even if you build your kernel locally, uh, like for the first time, if you touch only the kernels uh, the the module sources, it will literally only do that. And everything else is skipped through in usually less than a second. This, like incremental bits, are fast, yes. Within the rule validation.